Hi guys, welcome back with me. Our channel 2025 babe, Persona 4 Arena. We're going to do another story welcome mode here. To the Velvet Room. Okay, next. Exist between dream and reality. We're going to do with sure. Now then, why don't you introduce yourself? <clears throat> the Empress. With Suru Kirijo, Ernest of the Kirijo Group Mega Corporation, a member of Siege, which ended the Tatsumi Port Island incident. The so beautiful the and blind. popular, she is also loose. Artemisia, her persona can freeze you. open it to the bones. You can think of it as well, very well. Let's go. 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 Late November, in the year two, 2010. The darkness fell without warning. At the same time, the previously busy examination room fell so silent that the man's ear heard. Hey, what happened? He called towards the back of the room, but no answer came. After working for public safety for over a decade, he thought little could face him anymore. This was uncomfortably alien. It was no ordinary blackout. If it were, the faint light from the machine running on battery power such as cell phone would remain. But the silence dissolved him even more. He hadn't heard so much as a single cry. When he looks around, he saw one spot in the darkness where something was giving off an eerie glow, as if painted in incandescent pigments. Yeah. Once his eyes began to adjust to the darkness, he was finally able to make out the area around that light. The signing spot was revealed as a small, strangely decorated box that the man had. While it just delivered to the forensic unit. Forensic team! What the hell is- He called out, still squinting at the shadow of a person he could see at the window before him. But as the shape resolved, he showed that it was not a person's shadows at all. <gasps> he had no word to describe it. At first glance, it seemed to be a coffin. Indeed, that is what it would seem like. But he had never seen a coffin standing upright, tall as an adult, shining like a dark crystal. Yet, that was clearly what the crystalline mass was squinting in his spot where a window clerk normally stood. And upon closer examination, it wasn't the only one. A task. In front of the evidence of next to a reference computer the object powered everywhere as if they had taken the place of humans what are these a chill ran down the man's spine yeah, people was the thought that instinctively came to mind is the reason he couldn't hear anyone else's voice was it because everyone but him was What's going on? Once the fear had set in, it wasn't easy to shake it off. Family office was starting to look like a grotesque netherworld. He felt quite sure that he had to get out. Quickly, he turned and grabbed the knob to the door through which he has just entered. But... What the... It didn't budge. It wasn't that the door was locked, preventing the knob from turning the latch. The knob was completely frozen in place. Is anyone here? Hey, let me out! The man slammed his fist against the door, yelling in desperation. But the sensation he felt when he first impacted the surface wasn't that of hitting a door. He felt completely at odds with what he saw, as if a picture of a door had been drawn onto a solid wall. It was then that the man noticed that another light, similar in color to that emanating from the box, could be seen on part of his hand as he swung it forward. It was a ring, and suddenly he remembered. When he broke in the small box, he found several bizarre ring-shaped objects within it. While handing it over to Forensic, he suspect that they might be rings to check the theory he'd put one on. And now that ring was emitting the same eerie like as the box. So he still had no idea what was going on. It was immediately apparent that it was directly related to the current situation. The man grabbed the ring with 
sweet, slick finger and tug, ready to pull off his own finger if necessary. Just at that moment. I wouldn't take I wouldn't that take off, right, off now. right now. What? Man can't help but gasp. He looked around but could sense no one inside the room with him. Where had the voice come from? I'll be there to, rescue, be there to rescue, you rescue you shortly. shortly. Calm, Calm yourself and wait there. wait there. When the man calmed himself, he realized that it wasn't a voice. The sensation was indescribable, but it was distinctly unlike hearing with one's ear. Who's there? Oh, pardon me. Oh, pardon me. This is Mitsuru, Mitsuru Kirijo. Kirijo. We, met we met earlier. Kirijo? He did know Kirijo. It was she who brought a strange small box. And that wasn't all he knew. The Kirijos were a weak family who used their fortune and influence as a shield, continuing to frustrate the police. Despite that, the man couldn't help but feel relief was over him. Perhaps he might survive this after all. Oh, well, I appreciate the help. Just hurry! After getting the matches words out, he sank to the floor, the door at his back. The third Kirijo, if you recall correctly, she was the oldest daughter of the Kirijo group's founding family. He noted that her voice had been far, far calmer than his, despite the situation they were both in. He sensed a measure of trustworthiness from her. And to think, it had been merely an hour ago that he was asking himself what such a young girl had been chosen as the head of the Kirijo group at all. The digital clock on the corner of the desk quietly announced the arrival of 10 in the morning. Normally, most of the staff would be out and about by now. The entire police department was in turmoil today. It was only to be expected, with a key figure from the Kirijo group visiting on unusual business. Kirijo, huh? Kirijo group was a major trading firm, synonymous with Japan. It had links to all areas of business, not a day could go by in the city without hearing their name. The clock that had struck 10 board the logo of Kirijo Electronics and KJ, and KJ was the carrier for the cell phone provide to every member of the force. A few days ago, the same Kirijo group had made a seemingly insane proposal. The document was hundreds of pages, but a brief summary would read, We wish to collaborate with the police of an unofficial department for eliminating monsters. Well, it does happen from time to time. Famous businessmen end up advocating cultish nonsense in pursuit of their ambitions. One consideration, it was decided that the Kirijo group should be invited in to give their pitch. Of course, there was no intention of spending tax money on the Atlantis proposal. The police interest in humoring the Kirijo groups lay elsewhere. The Kirijo group had offered an incentive whereby if the police agrees to this meeting, they will provide a detailed list of the ergonomics research life artifact, as well as actual samples. It was this that drove the official decision. But there had been dark rumors bandied about the Kirijo group over the last 10 years. While still a family-run business, some say that old man Kuis said Kirijo has delved into paranormal research and was performing inhuman experiments. The police collected enough evidence to test the rumor and had prepared many times to force an investigation. But every time, the investigation came to nothing due to the group exerting hidden pressure, frustrating those working on the case to no end. The investigation prime target was the infamous Ergo Research, the Kirijo Ergonomic Research Lab. Exposing the Kirijo Group stock site had been a dream of public safety for 10 years now. And now, Kirijo seemed willing to hand over Ergo Research's tightly guarded secret on a silver plater. No one knew the reason for the sudden about fees, but neither did anyone think of turning them down. They agreed to the summit not to hear out whatever proposal Kirijo was offering, but as a stepping stone toward unearthing their past crime. Time passed and agreed upon time in the afternoon came. The man was tasked with watching over and bringing in the artifact from the Kirijo group. Though he would not speak with the guests, the police plan afforded him a major responsibility that gave him something like a leading role. It wasn't long before the Kirijo car arrived in the underground photo court chair. The staff there to receive the gas on this rock at the long black limousine that would have turned heads on the main road. One of the youngest recruit looks toward the man and asks a question. Chief, what's with that car? 
but that was the least of the surprise in store. When the Kiri Jagu spread synthetic step out of the limousine, she was shown to be a beautiful young woman no older than a university student. Not only that, but she has a tender dress in what could only be described as maid uniforms. All of them were young women roughly her age. The scene mesmerized the fairy's dignitaries present to greet her. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I am Mitsuru Kirijo, representing the Kirijo Group. It's nice to meet you. Her brisk greeting radiated poise. From there, she shook hands with the assembled dignitaries in a manner that showed she was no stranger to social gathering. She's the company rep? Really? The young recruit who was sneaking looks up off the corner of his eyes muttered in spite of himself. Their proposal said the rep who's coming today would be the leader of this new unit, but I thought it was supposed to be some hardcore armed response team, and she's leading it? Well, I guess it's better than some meathead. Shut up and hold your position. But in truth, the man felt the same way. Suddenly, this monster extermination unit would never be incorporated. But even if it were, he was sure these whips of a girl could never do such work. Eventually, the dictatories entered the agency along with Miss Kirijo. All of them were lopsided smiles due to the young beauty's unexpected appearance. But that would do for now. The Nick Dishiri was only there to receive her. A true objective was loaded in the truck parked behind the limousine. The document and artifacts of Ergo Research. Right. Start bringing them in. Roger, sir. All the men signal his strange subordinates around the Kuriyo truck. They form a line, smoothly pacing boxes from man to man into the building. The article were at various size, with even a few that came in oversized metallic container for aerial transport. The Kiryu group had warned them not to handle this thing carelessly until explanation were forthcoming. But in truth, the department was already prepared to begin a forensic investigation of the object or even send them to the lab. Are you sure it's okay for us to open these? The instruction said not to. It won't be a real investigation if we let them hamstring our procedures. Besides, I can't think of anything they could send us that we couldn't handle. Unless there's real monsters inside these things. <laughs> The article was broken silent. The operation only lasted about 15 minutes. The man himself received the last item, about the size of a jewelry box, and checked the track to make sure nothing went overlooked before closing it up. That done, he turned and walked quickly toward the forensic room. Right so he might to maintain his composure. He couldn't contain the excitement he left felt. For 10 years, the darkness of the Kirijo group had been a frustrating legion, like mist within the department's fingers. Their chains investigate and expose them was here at last. If even the slightest evidence matched the DNA of those who had gone missing, or the victim of the unsolved case, victory would be theirs. The man tried to tamp down his acceleration and took another look at the small box he held. There was no upper lid on the box. Pedestal like frustration as a center and held a number of small, circular trinkets. Their usage was completely unknown. What kind of research produced this? Just as the man was about to hand the box to the windows clerk, he saw a wedding ring the clerk's finger and come to a realization. Huh. Are these rings? Hmm? Oh, uh, we're not sure yet. The man put on some protective latex gloves and tries one of the objects on. <sighs> After looking at it from every angle, its color and shape seemed to be nothing but ordinary. If it was meant to be jewelry, it wasn't very attractive. The man couldn't picture scientists in lab coats living away in the lab to create rings like this. The moment that unlikely possibility came to mind, the man felt somewhat embarrassed by his ignorance of fashion and accessories. But as soon as he reached for the small box to put the ring back inside, Jackson suddenly felt. Please step Please away step from away the door. From the, door. <clears throat> the voice hoeing in the man's mind broke him back to reality. He took a few steps away from the door, as the wreck and stood ready. Step away from the door. The more he talked about it, the strange the order seemed. How did she know he was so close to the door when she wasn't even in the room? Suddenly, a chill filled the area. In merge second, the entire door was coated in white. Where'd this ice come from? It had frozen over. 
The man couldn't believe his eyes, but the evidence was there in front of him. He could then hear a slight knocking sound, followed by a crack, forming in the center. The door buckled under its own weight and crumbled with a sound that was like building blocks being pushed over. Standing just fast as was the Kirija woman. She was walked over to the man with exquisite nonchalance. At her side was one of the meats he broke. Are you alright? Uh, yeah. We did give you fair warning, but it seems to have gone unheeded. The man looks toward the ring signing on his finger. And this happened because we touched that box? What is this thing? That ring gives its bearer an unstable form of pseudo-potential and allows anyone to experience the Dark Hour. The Dark Hour? The box itself seems to be a failed recreation of the Dark Hour. The effect radius is small and it malfunctions when improperly handled. The Dark Hour remembered that preach coming up in the common the creature group had sent. If you recall correctly, it was defined as a hidden time, unable to be experienced by normal people where everything stood still. According to the documents, it seemed to have occurred every night at midnight for about 10 years until spring 2011, as if forcing its way into normal time. Until now, it seems like a pure fantasy. But could this silent darkness be the very same thing? So you're saying those stories and that that occult sounding stuff was actually for real? <laughs> In that moment, a voice suddenly echoes from behind the hallway past the broken door. <laughs> Who's there? The man reflexively called out in alarm, realizing that the fear had not yet died down. What emerged from the darkness was the young recruit who had greeted the quest earlier and had been helping him and had been helping with bringing in the artifacts. The young man was staggering as if severely drunk. Chief! Uh, hey, are you alright? The man began to rise to his side. But the Kirija woman silently stopped him. He stood between the two as if protecting the man. But he's my... Before he could finish, a surprising cheese overtook the recruit. <laughs> the recruit fell to the ground with an agonized scream. A black, tar-like substance began flowing from his every orifice. The ooze spread unnaturally across the ground and cohered into a glob. It rose up like a beast raising its heat, and what looked like clouds began to form. It appeared so clear a sign that it possessed some malformed will. The man told again about the Kirija group's initial proposal. They wished to collaborate with the police of an unofficial apartment for eliminating monsters. Without a doubt, this was what they referred to. A uh, man that came up again and again was... This is a shadow. That it is. It's a monster that dwells in every person's heart. They usually can't manifest themselves this way, but it's quite common to see it happen during the dark hour. So the research to make this happen artificially, that's what Kirijo has been experimenting with. That did seem to be the extent of it. At the start. At the start? The man couldn't prevent himself from shuddering to imagine the implication of her statement. With a second roar, the half liquefied shadow suddenly took the form of some tail beast. But where the face should have been was nothing but a mask, giving the bizarre appearance of two creatures stitched together. The young woman, for her part, seemed not in the least perturbed. Kikuno, my things, please. The man stopped to risk something. The man wasn't sure where she had been carrying it, but she placed a sword in her master hand. The blade was specially cheap, similar in design to a fencing saber. You're going to fight it? Stay back. This will all be over soon. At that moment, as if understanding that conversation, the shadow squared itself and leaped toward the young woman. The speed matched its beastly appearance. In the darkness of the room, the man found it difficult simply keeping his eye off it. The young woman did not move, her sword remained lower in the face of the shadow advance. Of course, thought the man, an amateur like her could never react in time. However, Artemisia! At a word from the young woman, some unseen force slammed the shadow against a wall. The man momentarily dove his own eyes. 
for it had been the woman who replied, the who ruffled the monster, but a silhouette that suddenly appeared behind her it looks as though the being involved in the sublime light, contrasting the shadow dark blue, was a woman wearing a majestic dress. And silhouette held up a hand toward the crouching shadow. Once again, the man felt freezing air fill the room. And with that, the shadow stopped moving. Frost crystallized all over it, turning it into an ice sculpture within seconds. Only then did the young woman swing the sword in her hand for the first time. A wide gleam arched toward the air. On impact, the frozen enemy shattered like it had been a crystallized sugar rather than ice. The victory was so one-sided that the man hesitated to carry the bottle. Are you all right? The young woman turned toward the man. The sound of her boots hitting the floor gave him the jarring realization that she hadn't moved a single step during the free. Seeing that he was at a loss for words, she gave him a gentle smile. It was all too much for the man. He actually felt relieved to be protected by this small woman. One thing was obvious. She had been through countless battles, much like the one he just witnesses. Your fallen employee's life is in no danger, but he'll be very weak. Make sure he gets to a hospital. Should I make the arrangements? No, I should at least handle that. It is a public security matter. With a nod, the young woman approached the small box and manipulated it in a way he couldn't quite catch. The eerie yellow-green light began to feed. Moment later, the silence and darkness faded. The world had been the world had been restored. The man felt his body become suddenly lighter, causing him to breathe a sigh of relief. He hadn't realized until the pressure was gone that the air had been as suffocating as if it had been underwater. There was a stir of movement in the room. The forensic team and assistant looked at the man's and young woman perplexed. The man took a quick look around. Fragments of the shattered doors were stirring about. A young public security worker was lying unconscious nearby, and the carriage of guests who had answered without anyone noticing held in her hand a drawn sword. I'd be shocked too if I were them. It occurred to him that if normal people couldn't sense the dark hour, the sudden change in circumstance may have seemed to them like some magic trick. Excuse me, but this place is off limits to all unauthorized personnel. Um. Hey, what's going on here? The forensic staff look at the man helplessly. It's all right. We had a little emergency. Uh, oh. That aside, halt all examination of the relics they brought in. We'll wait for further instructions from the Kirijo group. Damn it. Huh? But you said... If there are any boxes that are closed, don't force them open. Not if you don't want to come face to face with monsters. <laughs> Leaving the frowning forensic team behind him, the man quickly went into the hallway with the Kirijo woman. I have to thank you for your help. And about the conference. I'll join in as well. It's been arranged so nothing you say would get through to the higher-ups. If the young woman was surprised at what amounted to a confession of betrayal, she didn't show it. Are you saying you will reconsider your plans? I can't overlook anything as serious as this. I wouldn't be doing my job as public security if I did. But make no mistake, the things I saw today are proof of the sins the Kirijo group has committed. They can't be punished under the law, but now that they're known, atonement will be made in some shape or form. Indeed. I never intended anything less. <laughs> you really put one over on us this time. Hmm? Oh, there's no need to be coy. What happened today was no accident, was it? We'd never have believed the reports unless we saw it in person. That's why such a dangerous box had no lid. Am I wrong? There was no lid. That's not possible. That box was classified as risk level three. It should have been securely fastened. The young woman fell silent, then gaps and gave the maid walking, finally beside her look. <sighs> Kikuno. The maid continued without the slightest signs of remorse and left her master behind. Both the man and the young woman sighed at once. Us guys in public security have a reputation for being tough. But it seems like you guys are no slouches yourselves. The summit that was meant to be a firm, perfunctory refusal took an unexpected turn. Promises were made to continue the talks. Six months passed. After many opportunities, 
to show the actual sample to the dignitaries who were set up. The proper special unit was established and mostly the form of security was requested. The security department, Shadow Response Unit, was the inauguration of the special unit that would in time be nicknamed the Shadow Operative. <laughs>